Hello everyone, welcome back to my RP1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video, we're going to make the first use of our new launch complex, ELA-5, and we are going to be tackling one part of the geostationary communication network contract. Um, this is the contract. We need to launch four of these commsats, each with 315 units on them. And then after all of that is up, uh, they will test it and our inclination will have to be below one degree eccentricity below 0.1 and the period as you see so we have done something smaller before to that orbit but not quite so large and that is why we need the new pad because it's a very large satellite we've got one built um, it's called g3 because it was the third type of geostationary satellite i designed in here uh, but normally it'd be called deneb a something uh, that's the number of uh, ariana boosters that we'd be adding and so next one even though it's uh, similar to this it's the a3 which means that we have three ariana boosters now there's a catch to that in that i'm going to assume we're using the same mounting points for the boosters and so it's sort of asymmetric which might not be a good thing but it's sort of more legitimate in a way uh, so normally the Deneb rocket would have a maximum of four boosters and the mounting points would be symmetrical to each other But we're taking one off because we don't need it uh, Because it's way OP for this purpose and we have three in fact even three is too much but the pad uh, Does not allow less than 345 tons and if we only have two boosters we're under 345 tons so uh, We're in the nether region between our launch complexes then Okay, but besides that, we have all this science to spend, and we should probably upgrade this R&D building. Now, we're not getting as many funds per day as we used to. <laughs> um, we've got a lot of stuff going on, but not really that much construction, just the admin building. Mm, so, yeah, we've got a lot of research happening, and we're going to get more research happening. I want to get this Hydrolox engine, this one. So we're just gonna go like that, get that, and that's a lot. Now there's no real rush to get that Hydrolox engine, but it'd be nice. We also need to make sure that we have actual docking ports. I guess, where's the stock docking ports anyway? It says it's Apollo docking system, but that's sort of neutral. That's not really an Apollo docking system. That's just a generic docking system. They're lying. <laughs> I declare that a lie. That's just a generic docking system. That has nothing to do with Apollo. That's illegal. Um, oh, this one's fine. This is the propellant only docking port. So that's fine. We can use that one. We really need a docking port though. So, but that will do. Yeah, that's a lot of science. We've already got the maximum number of researchers we can have so um i'll have to wait to spend on that though i think expected cost per day is 735 and we're only getting 182 so um this one remaining cost well 413 cost per day so still a bit rough anyway let's launch a geostationary satellite shall we well, there it is. Oh, it says inf insufficient avionics. Um, I guess I must have used a craft file that had the wrong avionics unit accidentally. Okay, roll it back. I mean, we've already tooled the new controller anyway, so it's all right. I think that does it. I should only take 52 minutes to fix it. Well, now it doesn't say anything. All right. Well, Throttle up, SAS on, and we'll have to keep an eye on our Venus, our second Venus probe arriving at Venus, but for now we should be clear for that. Okie dokie. Ignition. And launch. All eight engines going. The boosters and the core actually run out at the same time, or roughly. Not the greatest arrangement, but that's what the burn times sort of wreak on us. 
Given that I think we're going to just not have any decoupling of the boosters, we can remove those and save some money. Um, it got, it's gonna be like Proton instead. They're just gonna be stuck on. Lots of G-forces, we'll have to shut down engines for crewed missions. Okay, separation of those, separation of that. And fairings. We have way more than we need for this particular payload. But again, we don't have a middle ground pad. We will remove one of the boosters later on. I think we will use just two of the engines on the next stage. Okay, staging. And shut down. Okay, the fine orbit. Now, we could use this stage to help us out to boost us up uh, initially because we've got that other engine remaining and it can use this 786 meters per second, but we will dump it. Um, we will see if we can do it with just our payload as intended. Even though I might regret that later. So... It's tough to tell exactly where the equator is like this. Well, I guess MacJeb's surface info would be best. Well, if we wait, we're not going to have comms, but maybe we should wait. We, we can wait a whole orbit or something. This time we're, we'll be closer to the equator when we are communicating through Kano. Here we go. Okay, that's a little bit past, but should be okay. I actually got to turn normal before decoupling. Okay, off it goes. So, a little bit of normal, mostly just lifting our orbit up. And, well, we don't have enough technically, but we have RCS, so I think it'll be alright. I am not going to use the center engine for this yet. Unless there's a reason to. Of course, the little error bees always seem to give us more delta V than we asked for, so we'll see. We'll spin up. And let's go for it. Uh-oh. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, maybe we'll just have one. <laughs> it's fine. I don't like that. It's still one minute and nine seconds. It should be okay. Maybe we should just put one in the first place. Okay, go. Okay, we went a little bit too far. Should be pretty close, we just need to get the period right. The correct period, by the way, is 23 hours, 56 minutes, and 4 seconds. And so that is a geostationary satellite. Unfortunately, I have to turn to get sunlight. Um, well... Maybe I can do that very carefully. Alright, well, um, that's the wrong way around. I need to put these the opposite direction, because I want the antenna facing the Earth. Oh well. 6% wear though. Okay, that's a surprise. The, this is the new ones. So far we've been having 0%, but this has only been active for 7 now I did roll it back this time. This time I did roll it back because we had to fix the controller. That was five days back and then 25 minutes to fix it and then five days out again. So basically after let's say 11 days it's had 6% wear. I guess that's okay if we count the rollback. But I don't like it. <laughs> anyway. 
Um, I don't know if there's any infrared radiometry, but we're going to shut down avionics now. And it should have a lot of time to hang out until we launch the next one. Hopefully it'll be all right. We're already building the next one, but it's going to be a month and a half. Um, and I, that, that still has the booster decouplers on. I've got to remove those and also the separatrons from the next one, the third one. And then we're also going to have a fourth one. So let me get those ready and queued up. Okay, I've got the rest of them queued up. We're really at the peak of funding with this geostationary communication network thing. So that's a little bit rough since, hold on, it's not giving me the per day. We, we're only getting 594 per day. And whoops, uh, this upgrade is going to take three, uh, 735, but I'm going to start doing it. Now that we've got all the rockets queued up, I might as well. So, yeah, there's that. But we could take up a, a take a new program. But if we take this early interplanet probes program, crude orbit needs three slots. And, you know, we've already done the Venus flyby. It's the Mars one that's tough because that needs more communication range and we probably don't have that technology yet. On the other hand, we've got a lot of science. So, yeah, maybe this will allow us to hire some more scientists because we're doing the upgrade for the R&D building. We'll need more money to hire more scientists and that will allow us to do that. Even fast is seven years, apparently. Breakneck is six years. Since we've already done the Venus flyby, but then again, Venus orbits in our thing, then again, we've got a bigger rocket now, and we only used a smaller one for the Venus flyby. So that's complicated. <laughs> Fast on crew requires 2,400 confidence. If we go normal, that's 12 years. Then again, rendezvous, docking, EVA. Uh, I don't think the Mark 1 pod allows EVAs, so that could get complicated. Yeah, maybe I want to save enough to get fast on crude orbit just in case. So I'll go fast with this one, but we'll pick it up. Okay, how much for one of these upgrades? Uh, that's a bit expensive right now. Well, um, we'll only get through the GTO stuff by the time the R&D building is complete. Maybe I'll get this upgrade as well. Hope I'm not spending too much. I mean, we're losing money a bit. Basic capsules will be done. I wanted a higher... Oops, let's jump to ship there. Oh, it, the carbon alarm clock brought us out too late. <laughs> Darn it, carbon alarm clock. I don't know where I'm at right now, but it looks like we're crashing into it. Yeah, we're crashing into it. Okay, orbit, radial out, please. Uh, radial out, that one. I don't know if we have enough to correct this. We'll just do a desperation move. Should be doing science, though. Science is happening. So both our Venus probes were technically successful. Crashing into Venus might get us extra points, but of course we'll vaporize in the atmosphere pretty quickly. That should be safe. So, out of curiosity... How much to capture? Ah, uh, not that much. I mean, for a loose capture. Probably the actual orbit contracts will have some minimal apoapsis. But really, we only need a little bit more than what we've got in order to capture. Well, we'll watch it fly by. Closer fly, fly by this time. Hopefully got some visible imaging.
All right, flyby complete. It's still accumulating because of those long running sciences. You'll keep doing that and we'll let it be. Okay, so we've got one on the pad and one more done and the last one being constructed. I wanted to check on the one that we already launched. See how it's doing, whether it's going to survive in enough, enough time or not. Still facing the sun mostly. Still charged up. 23% wear only. Okay, not bad, considering it seemed to have a chunk of wear right off. Now it's 104 days, it's still 23%. I don't understand anything, it's fine, uh, as long as it survives. So, good, it's in good shape. We can launch the next one. The one we just launched is right there. I'd like these to be about, you know, 90 degrees apart. Okay, so we've got three boosters on this. They've still got the decouplers on. SAS on, throttle us up, and ignition. And launch. So far, so good. Okay, up. Don't know why that lasted longer, but all right. And we can do the fairings now, too. Forgot to take the extra two AJ-1027s off this one. We'll just use one. And uh, the ones we have under construction, or the ones coming up, we'll only have one anyway. Alright. Next. Okay, that's orbit. Uh, less extra this time, but still a little bit extra. And we are just gonna dump it. Okay, well, I mean, we could probably correct all the inclination at the equator right now here as part of this burn if we wanted to. Uh, so, by the time we get up there, that's five hours. We'll be right in the same place. <laughs> They'll be, they'll be, we're, we're ending up in the same place. That's not good. So we'll probably stay in orbit. We'll wait in orbit until we circularize. Okay, ignition. Okay, a little bit past again, but basically right on, and we have less than one degree of inclination. So, all right, and we might as well. Help that out even more by releasing the stage this way. Okay, off it goes. So yeah, that's right in sync with those. And we're gonna go around one more. Anyway, they're not at exactly the right period anyway. They'll drift, so it's fine. And ignition. Well, the lit. I mean, these little guys have an ignition chance of 98% these days. Okay, closer this time than last time, but we still need to back off a bit. Okay, well, it's satisfied with this one. Okay. So we've got two of them. Okay, so this is number three, and this time these things don't have decouplers, they're just welded onto the body. And we don't have three of the AJ-1027 slash ARBs, we just have one. In exchange, we have extra experiments on board, so hopefully we'll get some science out of this. So that's the idea. SAS on, throttle is up, ignition. Launch. Okay, separation and ignition. And fairings. All right, separation and ignition. 
And what we have in here is Cosmic Ray Science 2, Mass Spectrometry 2, and Infrared Radiometer 2. So, it's a sequel rocket, basically. <laughs> We've got all the sequels to our science favorites here. Okay, and shut down. Bit lopsided, but okay. And we'll just separate. Okay, and we'll wait in orbit before doing the rest as usual. Okay, we've got our plot again. We do have our stage in front of us right there. We've got targeted just so that we can see what the situation is going to be here. Oh, well, we're, we're going a little bit normal to correct some of the inclinations, so it should be okay. All right, I think you'll be fine to go right now. Oh, too far. Okay. Well, I might even back it off using RCS in this case. All right, that's not doing a whole lot. So let's just separate. Okay, off it goes. Once again, we'll be in a similar spot to where we already have something there. So... Um... We, we can only do one boost up, so that's the problem. It would be easier if we could... I mean, we could phase more subtly with the RCS, and that could take a bit of time. Maybe we'll keep it in this orbit for a bit. Uh, some of our experiments benefit from being in a high eccentricity, and we're not going to be in a high eccentricity once we circularize, so... Um, let's just point out the sun. Our other rocket is only 10% complete, so it's going to have some time. Oh, we just lost comms. Alright, we did the low over mass spectrometry. I think I'll be satisfied with that. We've been at it for 21 days. So, we've got a pretty close encounter with something over there. That's still our stage, probably. Okay, this looks like a decent opportunity to circularize. Oh, that one's got to be close, but not exactly there. It'll be a little bit different. Okay, selling fuel down, and ignition. It has ignited. Okay, that was a little bit early, but we should be able to RCS the rest. I should make use of the Agena secondary propulsion system more for this sort of thing. Okay, well that's more than we wanted, but it should be satisfied. Yes. So right now the mass spectrometry is not satisfied, but we did the low space over the Earth mass spectrometry too. We finished that off before we circularized, so we at least have that. The re the other two will run. Okay, it's spinning. We'll turn off the avionics. And last one. Okay, we do have different science this time. So we will be taking advantage of it. Throttle up. SAS on. Ignition. All engines lit. And go. Once again, all is well. Okay, separation and ignition. And fairings. And staging. So on this one we have visible imaging too, which we eventually have to send over to the moon. And we have imaging spectrometry. And shut down. 243 by 220, let's say. Okay. 
And we'll just stage that off. And go. It did light. Okay. A little bit too much as usual, but looks fine. All right, let's point at the sun. We'll probably get plenty of chance to do the visible imaging and all that, and the imaging spectrometry is going to take too long. So we'll just go straight into circularization if we have a nice gap here. Not this pass. I mean, we're in a 10 hour and 33 minute orbit. Eventually, we'll have a gap. <laughs> I mean, we're closer to that than even the spacing would mean that we would want, but it's at least not overlapping. We go. Okay, okay, too much, too much. Retrograde. Okay, well, it's performing the shakeout test. We'll point this at the sun and we'll wait the two days. Zero percent wear on these so far. Okay, it is happy. That is done. I'll just turn off the avionics on this. I forgot to do that. Okay, and it's still got science to do. The imaging spectrometry is going to take. 89 more days and this should survive those 89 days it's only at one percent wear after three days so yeah uh, it's got plenty of power and let's go back to space center the R&D building upgrade is done we're waiting on the administration building that'll take until June 17th and at that point we'll be able to pick up the crude orbit one I would assume but uh, let's complete the geostationary communication network right on time, by the way. So that is done. We've got these two. And once we've done the administration building upgrade, we will have the extra room to get the crude orbit one. Well, that's going to be interesting. So, yeah, we actually are a little bit short of the rep, uh, the confidence to get fast. I thought we would have enough, but we're a little bit shy of that. Um, so hopefully we'll do some mission to so that we can get more confidence. Anyway, right now we're not building anything. We'll figure out what to do next time. With that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.